Okay, I've officially found one of the silliest JavaScript operators because it never does what you expect it to. Let's go through some examples together. And for each one, I want you to tell me what the output will be. It can either be true or it can be false. And trust me, no trick questions. Okay, so let's start declaring an array. Let's call it names. And in this array, let's declare four names. John, Josh, Jonathan, and Joe. Now you tell me what happens when we console.log John in names. What will happen? You have three seconds to try to figure it out. I mean, John is right here, right? So what happens when we log this out? Is the answer A true or is it B false? One of those two. Let's open up the console and it is in fact false. John is not in names. Okay, let's look at one more example that I want you to guess what's gonna be the output. Let's have an array, const array, and let's put one, two, and three in there as numbers. Now, what is going to happen when we console.log out one in array? What will happen? Is the output A going to be true or is it B going to be false? What do you think? Well, how about we check the console? Of course, it's going to be true. I mean, what did you expect, right? Of course, the element is right there. John was right there as well, but it didn't really matter. Okay, so what happens if there's two in the array? Well, that's true as well. What happens if there's three in the array? Well, I'm gonna close the console and have you guess. Three in the array. Is it gonna be true or is it gonna be false? You take the guess right now. Well, actually, you were goddamn wrong, because 3 is, of course, not in the array. Okay, but this one is pretty easy, I promise. So, we have an object with a make of Honda, a model of Accord, and a year of 1998. Now, let's try deleting one of those properties. Delete and then mycar.make, for example. So, we're gonna get rid of this, and let's log out console.log what the value now is, the mycar.make. Let's open up the console. Of course, it's undefined. So, what do you expect to happen when we now say, and let's close the console for some surprise here, make in my car. This one right here that we deleted and now we're checking if it's still in the car. What do you think? Is it going to be there? True. Or is it not going to be there? False. Let's open up the console and of course it's false because we deleted it. Now what happens when we just set the value to undefined? Because in both cases it's just going to remove the value of Honda that it had previously and set it to undefined. So let's say my car dot make is going to be equal to undefined. Now let's log out the make in my car. What do you think will happen? Is it there now or is it not? The only difference being that we're setting the value to undefined instead of deleting it. In both cases, this is going to be undefined. Guess if it's true or false and let's open up the console and wait a minute, why is this true? Okay, so what is going on here? What's happening? Why is the in operator never behaving as we expect it to? For example, let's revisit the names, right? The const names are, for example, let's just have John and Jane for simplicity. Why is, if we log out the, for example, John in names, why is that false? Because John is clearly in the names, right? The thing is, if we did something like zero in names, that would return true. But of course, there is no zero value. And if there was, it wouldn't matter. This would stay true. So why is the zero in names true, but the John in names not? And there's a really important distinction. The in operator is something very, very different than the includes operator. For example, the names.includes John is definitely going to be true because now we are checking for the value of John in the array. However, when we use the in operator, for for example, John in names, it doesn't even matter if I misspell that or not, it's never going to be in there. And the reason is the in operator never actually checks the values we have in the array. Instead, it checks if it is an operation we can perform on this array. The only thing this in operator does is it tells us whether we are performing an operation that is allowed or not, because that is included in something called the prototype chain. What does that mean? Every operation that we can perform on this array right here, like the at or concat, is an operation we can perform on this array. Therefore, if we checked off something like concat in names, that is a valid operation, true, that we can perform on the array. It has nothing to do with the actual values. These are never being checked. And same if these are numbers right here, right? The values one, two, and three, they do not matter. If we do a check of zero in names, it will return true because the array has an 
index of zero. We can validate that. This is an operation we can perform on the index. Just like a string of zero, this is also an operation we can perform on this array. For example, if the string of zero was in names, it will return true because this, again, just as I showed you, is an operation we can perform. That's the same reason we could use something like length because array.length is always a valid method we can call on the array or something like pi in math, for example. There is a math dot pi we can use. Therefore, this operation will always return true. And that is the reason that the in operator never behaves as you expect it to. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Check out this one where I show you a really neat TypeScript trick that is going to make your life so much easier. I'm going to see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye bye.